Hello and welcome to the Pastor's Corner. Today we will look at Ephesians chapter 1 verses 7 and 8 from the English Standard Version. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight. In my devotionals in Ephesians, we have been looking at the spiritual blessings that those in Christ have. The first one is that he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him. The second is that he predestined those in Christ for adoption to himself as sons and daughters. And today we'll look at the third spiritual blessing we have in Christ, which is a big one. Those in Christ have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of their sins. I don't know if you realize how precious this blessing is. I think that many people take it for granted and don't think about its importance. Each of us is a sinner. Each of us has fallen short of God's expectations for us. You and I have gone our own way, pleasing ourselves and living in self-gratification and self-centeredness. God designed you and I to rely on him and desire to do his will. But from the time we were born, we have not relied on God or desire to do his will. Instead, we have relied on our parents or on our friends or on ourselves. We have desired to please ourselves through spending time doing what we want to do. We have desired possessions instead of God. We have chosen those things that are harmful to us, which God calls sin. And God has determined that each person who relies on himself or herself and desires other things that, or people instead of God is a rebel because something else or someone else has become God instead of the almighty God who created everything, including you and me. God has determined that the punishment for the rebellion is everlasting punishment and torment away from the presence of the holy God. You may ask, why everlasting punishment? What I did wasn't that bad, but you need to realize that your rebellion was against an eternal God, and so the punishment needs to be eternal to pay the price for our rebellion. And this is why Paul says that the wages of sin is death, and that death is an eternal death. Think about that. Think about the way that your desires for other things and your self-centeredness has turned you away from God and to a different path a path that ultimately leads to eternal punishment and torment. Each person on this earth is in the same situation as you are. And we see this when we read or watch the news. So many are seeking their own desires and their own self-gratification, and they deny the Lord God Almighty who created them. Psalm 14, verses 2 and 3 states, The Lord looks down from heaven on the children of man, to see if there are any who understand, who seek after God. They have all turned aside. Together they have become corrupt. There is none who does good, not even one. If God left us to ourselves, none of us would ever enjoy the bliss of God's presence. Instead, we would be tormented and punished forever for our rebellion. But God had compassion and mercy on us. He desired that we would enjoy the bliss of his presence instead of the misery and anguish of being away from God's presence. Therefore, he did the only deed that would ever allow human beings to be in God's presence. He came himself as a human being. And since he is eternal, he is the only one able to pay the penalty for the eternal punishment we deserve. He died on a cross and as, a, as an eternal man and through his pure sacrifice, he is able to pay the eternal price that is owed to him. He bought us out of slavery to sin through his own blood. And through his blood, we have forgiveness when we put our trust in his work instead of our own feeble efforts. And this is why Paul states that we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of our sins. And this great work that he has done is according to the depth of his favor towards us, which we don't deserve. He did it because of his great love for us. He lavished on us his grace 
based on his great wisdom and insight because he wanted us to be with him forever. Take time to consider how great his grace and mercy and love are towards us. Praise God for his indescribable gift of eternal life. Determine in your heart that in response to the magnitude of his sacrifice, you will desire him above everything else and everyone else, and that you will unselfishly serve him and allow him to be at the center of your life. Don't ignore this amazing gift of God. Seize it. Cherish it. Celebrate it. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God. That's all we can do. Thank you, Lord God. Praise you, Lord God, for the redemption that we have through Jesus Christ's blood on the cross. Thank you, Lord God, that we have forgiveness of our sins through your work on the cross. We praise you, Lord God, for your grace towards us, that unmerited favor that you have given us, Lord God. And we just thank you and praise you forever and ever. Amen.